and uh, we'll get started. So we got the audio back on as well. So, um, all right. So we are, like I said, I, I threw a curveball at people here and the, the curveball is coming to you all on Zoom. Um, we're going to actually start in the book of Ezra. And there's a reason. It's actually thought that Ezra might have, be, Ezra and Nehemiah were one volume um, in the writing of the post-exilic books. Post-exilic meaning it's after the exile. The exile to where? Babylon, right? From Israel to Babylon. And we're going to look at that uh, tonight. So Ezra being the first installment of two, actually, we think Nehemiah, Ezra and Nehemiah were both likely written by Ezra, uh, journaling, because that was kind of his job to journal what was going on um, at the time in the exile period or a post-exile period, um, that it would just be appropriate if you're studying Nehemiah to actually go back to Ezra and begin there. So we're going to take a few weeks in the book of Ezra. And uh, we will uh, begin our study here with that. Um, so you can find that. And while you're finding that, pray with me and we'll get going. Uh, Father, we come to you in Jesus' name tonight. We thank you for this time. We ask your blessing as we study your word. Uh, Lord, would you be our teacher and our guide? Would you, and by your spirit, lead us and guide us into all truth as you promise? Uh, Lord, we thank you for what this means, especially as we uh, sit out here at the ranch and look forward to uh, building and actually rebuilding an area that uh, had many years seen uh, decay from ill use. And uh, so, Lord, we thank you for all that you have purpose in this study and the weeks to come and even in the next year as we see things start being built out here. We just pray for your wisdom and understanding how it relates to us even today. As we give you this time, we ask your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we are in Ezra chapter Chapter 1, just a few background items as we begin. You can see the name meanings of these um, uh, writers in the post-exilic um, books, uh, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther, are all significant as they relate to, well, you can look, Ezra meaning helper, uh, Nehemiah meaning comforter, and Esther being hidden. What does that all sound like? The Holy Spirit. Yeah, the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit is called in the Greek, obviously from the New Testament. He's called the the the, the paraclete, right, is where we get the word comforter, I believe, um, or helper. It's actually it's used for both terms, or uh, used for uh, both uh, dynamics of the Holy Spirit. Esther being hidden. Now, why, why is, interestingly enough, Esther name being hidden, why is that significant to the book itself? What is hidden in the book of Esther? Does anybody remember? The Lord himself. God is actually hidden. You don't actually see the Lord mentioned at all in the book of Esther, which is really strange. It's interesting. But it's just like the work of the Holy Spirit. And that the work of the Holy Spirit is not to glorify himself. Uh, John, Jesus taught us in John that the Holy Spirit would come and he would speak of, Jesus said, me. As Jesus saying, this Holy Spirit would glorify him, Jesus. That's why we don't get all wonky in the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is not intended to us to draw attention to him but to, to draw attention to Jesus Christ. Um, and so we know that's the work of the Holy Spirit. So, but he's hidden. So he's hidden in, the, in, in that, that transaction. So um, anyway, so Esther being hidden, Nehemiah being comforter, the Holy Spirit is her comforter, Ezra being helper, and Jesus is called, or Jesus called the Holy Spirit our helper um, as well. So interesting. So this will be a very Spirit-filled study, even in the Old Testament. So I'm excited about that. Um, we date this between 457 and 444 B.C. Now, remember, the dates go down because we're B.C. as we head to A.D., right? Um, but uh, we are going to talk about right at the beginning in chapter 1 about the decree that uh, happens um, from Cyrus in 538 B.C., which is uh, heavily noted in Jewish history, especially by Josephus. So when we talk about 538, this was written later to journal and talk about what has happened in Israel's history to this point. So um, he's going to mention that really prolific time in Israel history that's highly journaled. And, uh, and so we're going we're gonna to talk about it in chapter 1 in a bit. But this was written in the five, or 450s to 440s uh, B.C. Um, so for that, that's, that's most of it. We're going to talk at the beginning before we get into the chapter, though, uh, um, is the Babylonian captivity. Because we got to understand a little bit about the Babylonian captivity before we get to this point where they're coming out of captivity. Um, so when we talk about the Babylonian captivity, we understood, we just said that they went to Babylon, right? They went to Babylon for how many years? 70, 70 years. Why is 70 so significant? 
perfect number. It's a perfect number. Seven is a part, yeah, part of it. Perfect number. Seventies are really interesting in Scripture, right? We know Daniel's uh, 70 weeks prophecy from Daniel chapter 9, right? That's significant, right? There's a lot of sevens in Revelation. Like, say, you're talking about seven being a perfect number. We've studied the book of Revelation a little bit here, and sevens are a plenty. Uh, seven is an important, or 70 is an important number, and we'll see how that plays into the 70, uh, re uh, 70 years that they were in captivity, especially when we talk about why. Second Chronicles chapter 36, if you want to keep a finger in before we even get into Ezra, uh, Second Chronicles chapter 36, it, it's not very far over to the, to the left, um, if somebody would not mind reading uh, chapter 36, 15 through 23, and those who are listening I might have a hard time hearing it, so we'll have them speak up a little bit. But if you can't, you can just read it on your own. But Second uh, Chronicles 36, 15 through 23. Go for it. Yeah. The Lord, the God of their fathers, sent word to them through his messengers again and again because he had pity on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked God's messengers, despised his words, and scoffed at his prophets until the wrath of the Lord is aroused against his people. And there was no remedy. He brought up against them the king of the Babylonians, who killed their young men with a sword in the sanctuary, and spared neither young man nor young woman, old man, or aged. God handed all of them over to Nebuchadnezzar. He carried to Babylon all the articles from the temple of God, both large and small, and the treasures of the Lord's temple, and the treasures of the king and his officials. They set fire to God's temple and broke down the wall of Jerusalem. They burned all the palaces and destroyed everything of value there. He carried into exile to Babylon the remnant who escaped from the sword, and they yeah. became servants to him and his sons until the kingdom of Persia came to power. The land enjoyed its Sabbath rests. All the time of its desolation, it rested until the 70 years were completed in fulfillment of the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. By Jeremiah. Interesting. And we don't have a ton of time, but for the sake of time tonight, somebody look up Jeremiah 29, 10 through 14, if you don't mind. We won't look at 25, 1 through 13, but somebody look up Jeremiah 29, 10 through 14. We, we tend to, to get this scripture mixed up with some wonderful sayings that come out of Hobby Lobby and your t-shirts, and, and that's fine. Um, but... Uh, um, you'll you'll see what I'm meaning here in a bit. But if somebody could, Jeremiah 29, 10 through 14. This is what the Lord this is what the Lord says. You will be in Babylon for 70 years, but then I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised. And I will bring you home again. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They they are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a give you a future and, and a hope in those days when you pray I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find you will find me. I will be found by you, by you says the Lord. I, I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you and will bring you home again to your own. There you go. Now you, you heard that promise there. Behold, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in a future. Looks so good on the fireplace mantle. It actually wasn't written to you. Um, that doesn't mean that the truth isn't true. God surely knows the plans he has for us, right? And they're good plans, right? I, so that, there's truth there. I'm not trying to make fun of it. But, but it is interesting. When that is written specifically to the Jewish people coming out of the 70, 70 years of captivity. Um, promised very clearly by the prophets. Interesting enough, what Beth wrote, or but what Beth read, uh, is that one of the issues why they were going into captivity was they did not listen to the prophets. They did not listen to who God had used to speak to them. Now, what what did they not listen to them about? In some of your maybe your Israelology history in the back of your mind, what what were some of the things that Israel really went into the Babylonian captivity because of? Worshiping foreign gods, worshiping idols was the main thing Jeremiah 25 talks about very clearly. They did not listen. They were given uh, uh, prophets, and they were given these to, to, to say, hey, turn or burn, buddy. You know, repent. And they would not listen. What are some of the other things? That, why did they go into captivity? Yeah, Beth. Well, this, this from Chronicles 21, the land enjoyed the Sabbath rest. The land. The, the land enjoyed Sabbath rest. What, every year, seven years? 
seven, one in seven. So every six years they were to work, and the seventh year they were to let it rest. Can you imagine? I mean, think mm -hmm. about this. This was what God wanted for his people, to take a year off. Wouldn't that be nice? Can you think about that from working, from laboring? Hey, everybody just gets a year off because I'm going to provide in year six enough for year seven, right? I mean, so if you all knew, see, this wouldn't work today, you know, because nobody knows how to save, right? So that's a thing because even in year six, they had to save it so that it was used for year seven. But it just wouldn't work. But that is, it's, the Lord said, you know, take a break. But they wouldn't. It's interesting. Uh, um, uh, the Kathy family. Uh, um, is it Dan Cathy's young, young, young Dan, I think is around for the Chick-fil-A. Mm -hmm. um, Chick-fil-A was noted as, or they've all, you know, they've always been closed on Sunday. Gen generally have been closed on Sunday. I think they still pretty much are. Um, but I remember, um, uh, mm -hmm. Truett, uh, the, 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 the senior, um, was, uh, in one of my, my business textbooks in my undergrad degree, which is in business administration. Uh, in, uh, in that textbook, they had a spotlight on Truett Cathy. And, uh, and, and talked about him and his testimony. And at the end, they asked him a question simply, why, why, why don't you open on Sunday? And he shared his, about his faith. And then he ended with this simple little thing is, and we can beat the competition in six days, so why work seven? <laughs> is what he said. <laughs> it was really funny. And so that's exactly what they do. They, they generally do, and they still do. Um, so they hold that principle uh, of wanting to take Sabbath rest because financially they see God's provision in that, and that's great. But yeah, so they missed that, though. The children of Israel did. For 490 years, they missed that. God gave them opportunity, and even he knew it would happen that way. But for 490 years, missing that one year, he kept track of each one of them and said, for 70 years, then take one out of those 490, at least 70, the land's going to get a break, right? And so, yeah, so one of the reasons is to give the land a break. Interesting. The land needs a break, too. That's just interesting, isn't it? Yeah, go ahead. Babylon. Uh, great question. I'd have to go back and check because there's a Syrian, right? They, they, yeah. they were led into Assyria, right? At least north, the north was led earlier. Um, but, uh, but not, yeah, I need to see what Ezekiel is referring to. But are you in yeah. the book of Ezekiel? Yeah, I'm in Ezekiel. It sounds a lot like it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and a lot of this is prophecy. See, Dan, Ezekiel and Daniel are looking forward, and they probably is, they're looking forward to this. Because Daniel even sees, in chapter 9 of Daniel, Daniel is saying, I studied the book of Jeremiah, and I saw that this was going to be determined to uh, the people of Israel, that they would be able to come out of Babylon, right? Because he's under Babylon at that time. And he saw that, oh, we're going to be able to get out of here. And then he prays to the Lord in chapter 9, Lord, let it be. You know, woe is us. We don't deserve it, but God, would your word be true? And that's what happens. And then, uh, and then obviously... Um, uh, it's announced to him angelically that uh, that they're going to get out of it. So, yeah, no, but but idolatry. They didn't listen to the prophets, the land getting rest. It's interesting. Um, and I think one of the commentators that I'd come across said, said it best is that the Babylonian captivity is sometimes the way in which God uses very similarly for us to get rid of our idols. Uh, meaning that he sent it because they would not get rid of it. They would not get it. And 70, 70 is indicative of a lifetime in the Bible. 70 years is written in, in I think David writes about the, the generation of 70 years in the Psalms. And so, yeah, so 70 is like a lifetime. And, and you and I struggle with a lifetime of sin, don't we? We struggle with a lifetime. And sometimes the Lord turns us over to those things so that in that turning over, uh, you and I, we would become sick of it. We would become sick of it, and we would come out not wanting it anymore. And that's exactly what happens with Israel. They don't turn back to idolatry, at least the idolatry that they served in the time prior, because they were in Babylon, and the people that were ready to come out of it were ready to come out of it and never went back to it, interestingly enough. And that's how the Lord works in some of our lives, too. Uh, sometimes he turns us over to those things. That's why once in a while we pray, Lord, you know, why am I still struggling with this, or why am I, you know, and and oftentimes we go back to it in our own way. God doesn't tempt man. God doesn't send us, you know, right? We know that from John or James chapter 1. But there are times when God allows us to fall right back in and headlong into it. And in allowing that, he gets us, allows us to get burned enough to where we desire it no more. Um, and even if it takes a lifetime, that's what he'll do. Um, and that's really indicative of what happens here in Babylon. So, so, yeah, so they come out of that, but they come out of it a different people. A stronger people, at least not going back to those things. Um, interesting. Well, let's move on. 
So back to uh, Ezra chapter 1. Let's start uh, just the first few verses. Let's look at verse um, verses uh, 1 through 4. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and begin right here. Uh, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, or it was in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, rather, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all of his kingdom and also put it in writing. This is interesting. Um, thus says the Lord, or sorry, thus says Cyrus, rather, verse 2, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever is among you of all of his people, may his God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and rebuild the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. He is the God who is in Jerusalem. And let each survivor in whichever place he sojourns be assisted by the men of his, pl uh, of his place with silver and gold goods with them, beasts, uh, besides free will offerings for those in the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Interesting. So at the beginning here, interesting, Cyrus is moved. The spirit moves on Cyrus. Cyrus, a Persian king, right? Remember, Persia uh, took over uh, Babylon. Right? As promised. In fact, interestingly enough, uh, Babylon in Jeremiah is told that because of how they treated Israel, even though God allowed, even though God allowed the Babylonians to take Israel captive, the way in which they did, the way in which Babylon took Israel captive was pretty brutal. And God was not going to let Babylon get away with what they did to his people. There's just no way. There was no way he was going to let that happen. And so God is just, even in the middle of all of that, God is just. And I think it's important to remember that. Even when God allows things to happen, that doesn't mean people, evil, they're getting away with it. That doesn't mean that. Um, and so Babylon is dealt with very severely, um, and, uh, and Persia takes over. Cyrus comes in pretty dramatic fashion, um, surprising fashion, takes over. Um, Babylon, and now they're in power. So, but God moves in the spirit of Cyrus, a, like say a, a Gentile, a heathen, right? The spirit of God can do it over anyone and anybody. My goodness, I'm I get the heebie-jeebies. I've been here. I don't know if you've been hearing about uh, the, the 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 tussle between Elon Musk and Bill Gates here as of late, making fun of each other online and, and billions of dollars getting thrown at each other because Bill Gates is shorting the stock of Tesla. Um, and then it, it's, it's, it's quite a dramatic thing right now. It's interesting. Uh, I, I can't even, I wouldn't even say any of the things that Elon Musk is saying about Bill Gates because it's very vulgar and it's very mean, but he's saying it out on Twitter. I mean, they, they are in a royal feud right now. It is really bizarre. And these are two big, big, two of the biggest billionaires there are. And I just, I, I'm like thinking for Elon, man, you know, he's asking for a bullet in the head. I mean, that's what he is. He, they are, they are, he's barking up a wrong tree because I think Bill Gates, pretty rough dude. Um, he doesn't seem like it, but he's a pretty rough dude. He's a, he's a, he's a one worlder. He's a, you know, all kinds of things. But as I was mowing the other day, I was thinking, God, you know, if you could do it to Paul, you know, or God, you know, if you could do it to, you know, if God, if you could move in any, anybody, um, you could even move on Bill Gates, you know, maybe not Bill Clinton, but, but yeah. no, no, but Bill Gates, no, <laughs> Clinton's, oh my goodness, predestined for, anyway, never mind. Um, but, uh, no, but, uh, you know, but just yeah. God can do any, any of that. And, and we need to keep that in mind. We need to, that's why it means we need to pray for people and not, not just, um, you know, think ill of them. We need to pray for them. So Cyrus, who would have thought? Cyrus would be the one that would be the agent. Of, well, actually, it was prophesied, right? Many of you know that. I don't know if you knew that or not. In Isaiah 44 and 45, we don't have time, but but actually, or do I have it? I do have it in there. Isaiah 44, you can look at it. Isaiah 44, 28. Um, I, it's not too far over. If somebody has it, you can go ahead and read it. But it, yeah, the, yeah, and it, well, yeah, but I, Isaiah 44 actually mentions verse 28 by name. Cyrus, 150 years, believe it or not, before Cyrus is even born. I mean, just think about that. Um, it's just amazing. Even 150 years before he is born, uh, Isaiah prophesies. It says, who says, this is the Lord, who says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd. He shall fulfill my purpose, saying of Jerusalem, she shall be rebuilt, and the temple, your foundation, shall be laid. Interesting, even so specific as we're going to see here in, in Ezra, 
that Cyrus's main job in this rebuilding effort, which is not everything, he doesn't go back and rebuild everything. His main focus is wanting to rebuild the temple. And that's exactly what Cyrus does. It's thought of actually written by Josephus that, that, that the, uh, uh, the Jewish leaders that were available at the time actually gave uh, some of these things, like maybe even Daniel. We don't know who exactly might have passed this along, but maybe passed this along to Cyrus and showed, this is what Isaiah wrote. This is what the, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, this is what they write about you, Cyrus, even before you were born. And that might have moved him. Uh, to decide to declare that, yes, okay, well, God is the God of heaven. He's the God of the, the, the Hebrews. He's, he's, you know, he certainly knows, and, uh, and, and he's the one that needs to be worshipped. And he Now, you might hear about the si cylinder of Cyrus, and the cylinder of Cyrus is in antiquity. It's really interesting. Cyrus wrote um, all of these things, but he did not write it as nice and wonderfully biblically you know, sound mm -hmm. as he did here in, in Ezra chapter 1. <laughs> Uh, in fact, he definitely writes like a world leader at that time that he was the God that allowed all of these things to happen and the nations all bowed down to him. And, uh, but the, interestingly enough, it's believed that the Semitic people, the Hebrew people, are on that cylinder of Cyrus, which is fascinating because many people try to discredit that there were even Hebrews in the land or had anything to do with these people. Obviously, they, they are a major player in world history, whether antiquity, you know, it will bear that out, I guess we should say. Um, and it has been bearing that out. Uh, but anyway, Cyrus. So, you know, it's kind of like, you know, when, when the, 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 the quote-unquote people, like, the, the, like they, show, they show well at church and they look good at church. But when they get out of the world, then they, they, they don't talk like they do in the church. I think that's what's happening here. I think Cyrus did, did have a positive confession like we have here written, apparently written, as it says in Ezra 1 through 4. Um, he wrote this. He wrote a praiseworthy thing to the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, right? But when he got around his buddies and he's out there in the world and stuff, like, oh, that's me. That's really me, right? I think that's what, what happened with the cylinder of Cyrus. But, but anyway, well, moving on, it's interesting. So that's promised by, by the Lord. Obviously, prior, Cyrus would be raised up. Cyrus declared that he would build him, verse 2, a house at Jerusalem. Again, Cyrus is going with the program, right? As the Lord had declared in Isaiah's ministry, he would be dealing with the temple. Uh, now, whoever is among you, may, uh, may his God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem. He's declaring any Jew to go up there and go do this. But we're going to see that that's a rough, uh, a rough thing. It's not going to be easy to get people to, uh, to go uh, and leave Babylon. And we'll see that here in a little bit. Um, actually, we'll move on into part three. Uh, somebody want to read verse five? Um, uh, see, see, verse four, before we move on, uh, he, he encouraged all kinds of things to be given to them. Uh, silver, gold, goods, beasts. Free will offerings to the house of God. I mean, he was planning on loading these people up to go and do this. He wants he wants God's will. You know, the world needs God's will to happen. Um, and and if the world knew it, the people of God might get with the program, right? If the world, it, it, it's just you know they're complaining about you know green this and New Deal that you know, and we need. You know, all this sort of, could you imagine if, if Joe Biden or any of these guys got with the program and were like, no, you know what, we need the, the only way out of this is the blessing of God. We, we, need, we need the people of God to get back to the house of God. Uh, so let's get the people back to the church, you know, and people get back on Sunday morning and, and let's do that and let's see what, what would happen. Could you imagine? That's what Cyrus is doing. People, we need to get you all back to, to Jerusalem. We need to get you back to the place of blessing and maybe things will, you know, start going real well, right? Mm -hmm. And and yet, we're going to see that the people of God really drag their feet. They don't really want to leave Babylon. It's interesting. Not all. Many, well, some do. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it here. Verse 5. Somebody continue if you don't mind. Verse 5. Then rose up the heads of the fathers' houses of Judah and Benjamin, and the priests and the Levites, everyone whose spirit God had stirred to go up to rebuild the house of the Lord that is in Jerusalem. And all who were about them aided them with vessels of silver, with gold, with goods, with beasts, and with costly wares. Besides, all that was freely offered. Cyrus the king also brought, brought out the vessels of the house of the Lord that Nebuchadnezzar had carried away from Jerusalem and placed in the house of his gods. Cyrus, king of Persia, brought out these in charge of Mithridath, the treasurer, who counted them out to Sheshbazar, Shesh Shesh the prince of Judah. And this was the number of them. 
30 basins of gold, 1,000 basins of silver, 29 censers, 30 bowls of gold, 410 bowls of silver, and 1,000 other vessels. All of the vessels of gold and of silver were 5,400. All these did Shesh Bazar bring up when the exiles were brought up from the Babylonia to Jerusalem. All right. So, okay. Then rose up the heads of the fathers of the houses of Judah and Benjamin, right? And the priests and the Levites. I like this. Everyone whose spirit, again, we're talking about the work of the spirit, right? In these, in these books. Whose, whose spirit God had stirred to go to rebuild the house of the Lord. You know, side note, in all kinds of ways. We need to be praying, not probably so much. I mean, we can pray all you want to about specific things, and the Lord knows it already, and I'm, I'm so glad about that. Don't, don't, don't ever take me to say don't pray for something. Pray more for the stirring of the Spirit. Pray more for the stirring of the Spirit. We don't know what we ask when we pray oftentimes. We don't know necessarily what the will of the Lord is. We don't know. But we do know that when the Spirit is stirred up, He leads us where we, desert, where we really desire, ultimately need to go. And that—that's what he, when the spirit, spirit, uh, the spirit was was spirit, or the spirit was stirred up rather <laughs> in, them, in them. They were they were going, man. They they were moved to where they needed to be, and so that that's what we need to pray for, really, probably more than anything. Yes. Uh, are you, are you, are you, are you the Israelis Right. Some people say they were lost at this point. No, they they're, they they will be mentioned. Uh, but it, they come out of the woodwork in time. But yes, th these are the ones ultimately, because this is talking about primarily the temple, right? Uh, these are the ones that ultimately be begin the quest at home. So, but the, the other Israelis were in Babylon. Yes, time, yes, like yes. By that time they got there. Yes, okay. yes. I heard that the one who smelt all those metals dealt with them. Smelt the metals dealt Oh, boy. Oh, we're getting into <laughs> We're getting into corny dad jokes over here. But anyway, yeah, yeah. No, some people say that the ten, the ten uh, tribes went north and were lost, but they, we know that they weren't lost. So we, we think that they came back by the direction of the decree of whether it was Cyrus or later it's Artaxerxes that goes and builds, rebuilds the city along with Nehemiah. They end up being brought back. So it's they're not lost tribes. We don't so, believe. So, but I guess uh, yeah, just these two tribes responded initially. Right, initially, yeah, and we in line with the priesthood and and what's going on in Jerusalem for for sure. It's going them going home, right? Is ultimately what's happening here. It wasn't on a name for Babylon, the Babylonians, the uh, the, Yeah, the Chaldeans. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Chaldeans. Yep. Uh, well, no, no. I, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, that's 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 out of base. That's out of line. Okay. Good question. No, no. But right now the Chaldeans. See, during that time they were leaders of the, the, the known world at that time, right? The world empire. Uh, so they would have fit underneath that. But anyway, Good yes. Question. About how far from Babylon back This is this is not a this is not an easy stretch. I mean, if you think Babylon being what we know of as in Iraq. You can look at the Middle Eastern map, and you go west, and it's it's a trek. This is a long journey. Yeah, I, I don't know the mileage, but you can, I mean, if you go west, you got Jordan, and then you've got, you know, beyond that, we can look at a map. But, um, 50,000 Jews go back? Yes, yeah, we're going to see 42,000, a little over 42,000. Yeah. This is not a small thing, small undertaking. I mean, they were loaded down with a lot of goods, but can you imagine? I mean, yeah, it's... Uh, any of us that have moved lately, I mean, yeah, like I know the princes are shaking their heads. <laughs> it's a small thing for God, but it's going to require faith and work and all of that. Yes, that's why it needs to be a spirit stirring because something in these guys is going to get them to do something that most people won't want to do, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah, exactly, because this is just a crazy thing to think about, having to travel hundreds and hundreds of miles with thousands and thousands of people. This is a, a lot of desert. Yeah, this is not... They didn't drive the car. They didn't, they didn't have Teslas or even pay $4 or $5 a gallon or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's interesting. Now, we see here that, um, that all of these things that were promised to be given to them, and I don't like how my translation puts it here. Does anybody have a new King James or a King James version yeah, on, on verse 6? All those who were around and encouraged them with articles of silver and gold and goods and livestock and with precious things besides all that was willingly offered. They encouraged these people. See, they were stirred in the spirit, right? They were stirred in the spirit, so we got to do this. 
But then the people giving all of these things to this project encourage them. And I think that's important. And that's why I asked in, on your notes. You can, you can see here. I'm sorry, I didn't provide the notes for you guys. I should have provided the notes for you guys listening online. I can get those to you, but we have notes for tonight. Um, but I ask in the notes, what helps us, helps us confirm God's will to us in hard decisions? What things help confirm God's will to us in hard decisions? People to encourage you. Yeah, circumstantial evidence sometimes helps. Never should it be only circumstantial evidence. We we are going on the written word of God right now. Like they like like they have holy writ to say God wants this done. We're going to do it, whether it you know we're encouraged or not. But the encouragement is so key, right? Just because they know God wants them to do it, just because they're stirred in the spirit, all of that is still not enough gas. But on top of that, there's encouragement, and I think that's really important that we see. No matter how spirit-filled you are, no matter how it's written down, you and I still need encouragement. We still need encouragement. Even if it's circumstances, if it's financial giving, those kind of things, we still need encouragement. And others need encouragement too, and you can give it. So encouragement is important. What else helps confirm God's God's will and God's plan in hard decisions to us? Confirmation. Confirmation, often through God's word, right? When we're studying God's word or we're in God's word. There are others in the body. Or others in the body. Yeah, God can give spiritual wisdom or insight, right? Uh, to, to help guide and direct. Yeah. What other things? Help. Things line up. Things line up. I mean, there's just some things that are undeniable that, Lord, this is you. I, I, did, I did not do it. You did, right? It's easy for us to try to align things a little bit ourselves, right? <laughs> Push it along a little bit and help God's will. Wait, no. no, when God does this. And this is, you know, oftentimes it's something that's for you and to me that it's out in the left field. That doesn't mean that it's it's not on your heart. But it happens in maybe an unexpected time or it happens in an unexpected way. Oftentimes that's the Lord, right? Yeah. Not in your making, but in the way that he does it. The way we got the... The way we got the ranch. It, it, yeah, and many of you know that testimony out here. This yeah. thing went under contract, cash offer, Done. I was told, you know, that thing will close in 30 days, you know, it's over. So then, well, okay. And then in the middle of the night, when it was getting close, I, I didn't even, I wasn't counting days. I didn't know, but in the middle of one night, it was just interesting that the Lord had woke up, woke me up, and it's like, it'd be interesting to check the, the, the realty listings this tonight. And, and I went back, and I looked, and go figure, in the realty listings that I looked, this place came up again. And I called the realtor the next day, and, and, he, and he said, well, interestingly enough, the contract fell through yesterday. Right on the last day that the contract was good. And so I didn't even know. It was 30 days, you know, whatever. And and so, yeah, so you're interested? Yeah, so, you know, and we got the elders out here when this was a dump. I mean, this was crazy. My dad came in, entered, not this window, the back den window. So it's broken because my dad did that. Uh, <laughs> not that it didn't need fixing anyway. But there was a dresser there, too. And it was funny because he, he, he came through the dresser, literally through the dresser. The dresser top fell over and broke. But anyway, it's a long story. Uh, the, realtor, the realtor would remember it. Huh? No, 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 no. Through the dresser. But anyway, so my dad went through the window into the I mean, there was no other way in because they supposedly hit, hit a key out here and we couldn't find it. Anyway, so long story short, yeah, exactly, Emma, like you're saying, yeah, uh, ways in which, like, we didn't make that happen, um, but the Lord did, the Lord did, and so, but, but again, this isn't going to be an easy thing, like you said, this long trek, this is crazy to most, the Spirit had to stir people up to get going, people were giving to the project, that's great, but this is a, this is a pretty interesting thing. Uh, one last thing I wanted to, before we move on to the next section, what articles are missing? Because we know we have, uh, in, Cyrus sees this as such an important thing that he goes and he gets, remember articles were taken at, during the Babylonian captivity under Nebuchadnezzar. The articles out of the temple were taken. The temple was burnt down. All the articles were taken and, and, and apparently not necessarily handled very properly. Because we don't have the, the, the remaining article. There's a lot of things that are missing here. Like what? We don't have, you know, altars of incense. We don't have... You know the table of showbread. We don't have you know we don't have those things that are coming back. We don't have the ark of the you're right. The ark of the covenant is obviously not there, right? Yeah, there's some big things that are missing here. Did that stop God's plans? No, no. 
And I think that's going to be important as we see in the next chapter real briefly. We won't be very long. But yeah, it's, I think it's easy for people. Like, I mean, we miss it. We just read right over it. But, but you and I got to remember that these things were near and dear so much to the Israelites and, and the, the Levitical priesthood that you can imagine there would be people who, well, if it's not all here, I don't want to have anything to do with it, you know, right? Is this really of the Lord? You know, can he use, can he do anything with this if we don't have it all together, right? Can he use me if we don't, if I don't have everything all together? You know, I mean, right? You see the parallels. You mean like when he makes the donkey talk? Like, like when he makes a donkey talk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Huh. Yeah, Balaam yes, didn't he have. Can, he can use, he can use anything. Yeah, right. yeah. Yep. He rode into the streets of Jerusalem on a donkey, and they were expecting him to come in on a white horse, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rarely do, does the plan happen like we would think, right? So God is saying, "I can, I can deal, I can do with this, I can work with this," and He moves it to these. These things were there still, and these things are given back. You know, the 30 basins of gold, thousands of silver, and all these things. But it's amazing what's not there. And what would you and I would say, you know, hey, not enough to, to do do God's work. Let's let's stop the project. Don't don't go. No, 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 no. God can do it. God can still work with these things. God is a restorer of those things that are lost, right? And so... They should have. Shouldn't they have the plans for building those things? Original. Yeah. Well. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so sure. The they can rebuild it. It's yeah. It, it's <laughs> what do we say when it gets you know it gets burned down? It's just stuff. It can be rebuilt, right? Yep. But double the price today than it was. You know, whatever. My dad. <laughs> my dad was talking the other day. He had not checked his insurance for a long time, and they had not up their their dwelling insurance, right? And now houses are so expensive compared to what they were ten, you know, five ten years ago or whatever. And so his his dwelling was like coverage is like half of what it would cost to rebuild right now and so anyway he's trying to figure that out but yeah so we'll rebuild it and now it's twice the price but whatever that's okay no but it is it's just stuff right and god can work with that so uh, yeah yeah but that's chapter one okay so real fast and again we only we don't have a ton of time we got maybe about seven or eight minutes uh but i do want to look at chapter two the numbering of the people we're not gonna, i'm not going to read through I, I i'm sorry i just don't want to fumble the words of the people all like really bad. So if you want to try it tonight, late at night, if you're up and you really want something fun to do, you know, just just go through and try to pronounce all of these these names. And, and you know, if you want to call me and ask questions, please do it. You know, Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, the, you, <laughs> Jeff got Nebuchadnezzar right. Well, very good. Thank you. Oh boy. Now we're really anyway. Now they're showing me up. Now we'll read a little bit at the beginning here. In verse 1, it says, chapter 2, verse 1, Now these are the people of the province, or sorry, province, who came up out of captivity of those exiles whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried captive to Babylonia. They returned to Jerusalem and Judah, each to his own town. They came with Zerubbabel. Now, about Zerubbabel, it's important to understand, there's debate on whether Zerubbabel and Sheshbazar are one and the same or are they two different guys they're probably one of the same uh, just good commentators i agree with that that, uh, that give good reasons to that there's good commentators that say otherwise but it's thought that maybe Sheshbazar was the chaldean name right and what we have here is maybe the would be hebrew um in uh, zerubbabel so that's that's what's thought there could be the case we don't know for certain but that, that could be the case. Yes, yes, very true. And he comes back and ultimately here is the one that's, you know, bringing, bringing back the, well, the people, the people yeah, into, into the royal city. Yeah, it's very, very interesting. But one, you got to see this. So Zerubbabel, but with Zerubbabel, one of the main helpers of Zerubbabel is mentioned next, and this is so interesting. What's his name? Jeshua, which is actually Yeshua. Yeah, who? Who is that? What, what does that sound like? Jesus. Jesus. That is that that is yeah. In the Hebrew, is the word we get Jesus. Yeah, <coughs> his name is Jesus. Interesting. Now I don't believe this is Jesus, but I think it's really interesting how this all works out, isn't it? Is it right? Isn't that all of you, all of you, is it uh, Joshua? You might. The same yeah, 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 yes, yes. Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Oh, did you say something, Jeff? Uh, I was just going to say, you might mention that there's no J in Hebrew. 
Right. So there's no J in Hebrew. Right. That's where we get that yes, yeah, Yeshua. Yeah, it's that, yeah, it's that Y is very strong there. But yeah, Yeshua. Uh, uh, it, so yeah, interesting. Interesting. So Jesus just fits himself here in the Old Testament like he should. All right. It's just kind of neat. But yeah, again, not, not a theophany. We're not saying that. But it is interesting. It's just God's word and, and how it works is pretty cool. Nehemiah, Sariah, Reliah, Mordecai, Bilshan, Mispar, Bigvi, or anyway, he's a he was a rapper. He was a rapper. Thank you. Uh, oh yeah, Reum and but uh, and Bana. And, and it's going to go through, and it's going to mention not exclusively because these are interesting. Look at this. In verse 3, it says, A number of the men of the people of Israel. Now, uh, some of your translations, uh, what does it read, verse 2 into verse 3, about these men? Um, it should call them um, the head of the family or something of that nature. No, no. Uh, what, uh, read verse 2 into 3. It says, The number of the men of the people of Israel. Yeah, the men of the people of Israel. Okay. We're, we're going to see it's mentioned. I think some of your translations might mention or that these are the, the heads of the tribes or the families of Israel. And, and then they're issued or talked about in their family groups. And, and I think the main reason why I wanted to mention that is this significant in that David in Psalm 68 uh, verse 6 talks about that God has put his people in families. But the rebellious go against that uh, and that's a really rough paraphrase but he puts he puts his people in family units and, and and the rebellious wants to undercut that and that's exactly what we're seeing nowadays you might remember the blm movement one of the first things that they were noted in, and it got in trouble for and actually ended up trying to take off the page is that their whole mission was to destroy the family unit and that was one of their main things that they put on their their website is that their intention is to destroy the family the rebellious try to destroy the family but God has made the family to be put together, and he honors that. This could have been a really short chapter in saying, well, there's a 42,000, some whatever, the people of Israel, you know, these tribes. But these people are mentioned, the lead, the head, the dads, the, the fathers of these families are mentioned very specifically uh, through chapter 12. And that's why we're just not going to take a lot of time. But you can see this is numbered very specifically, and it's because there's a priority of family. And, and we got to remember that. That God really has, has uniquely knit us in our family, and he has uniquely put us together for, a, a, for his glory, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and to do a, a, a specific thing. Um, you know, all families are very different. We, we, we live differently, spend out everything. There's so much, so much uniqueness in the family, and that's just how God works. And so that's something that, that don't, don't, don't overlook when things are getting built out here and things are... Don't overlook the, the, the ministry of your family, right? That's, that's prime. I remember James Toth told me that it, 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 last pastor before me here at Calvary. He's just never overlooked the ministry of family. I remember him telling me that. And it's really important. And he had, he had a big ministry to his family. And many of you guys know that. Um, he had some special needs that were in his family as well. And a whole bunch of things like that. And that's what took them north, you know, back to where home, home base was for them. But never overlook the ministry of family. And so anyway, that, that goes on into and talks about uh, the family. Um, Uh-oh, we might have lost our onliners, but that's okay. Sorry, we're just going to keep pushing through and we're going to keep going. Um, we're almost done. Um, so anyway, you're going to see through verse 36 through 63. The listing of next the priest. So up through the first 35 verses, you see the listing of the people. But then we start seeing the listing of the priests. Now, you could try to, some people try to discredit the Bible by taking this list and then trying to match it with uh, ones that are written or lists that are written with Nehemiah about prior who had gone before. And even there's some other extra biblical lists that some people try and they say these lists are all different and we're missing people and da, 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 da. so the Bible can't be true, right? And, and, and like, why do we have to be so negative other than they just want to discredit the Bible, right? And, and why can't we just understand and say that in the translation efforts that have got, gone from this point all the way till now, that, you know, names can be dropped, things can be consolidated, all kinds of things can happen, right? Goodness gracious, have you ever tried to keep track of a really good grocery list? And do you ever get it right? You know, no, we're, we're human, right? Alone couldn't keep track of their kid. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> yeah, Joseph and Mary didn't do a very good job of Jesus either. You know, yeah, and who could keep track of their kids anymore? No, no, but yeah, no. So, so goodness gracious, let's let's. This is God's. This is God's word, right? In the original, we believe it's inerrant, right? In translation efforts, there's struggles. Sure, we get that, right? But that doesn't negate or, or neglect the reality, the validity of God's word. If some name is missing on the list, goodness gracious, okay. So some people are just that crazy, but you'll see that. But anyway, but what's interesting is, is in this next section, verse 36 through 63 is the listing of the priests. And, and, and just real briefly, I want to highlight just a few things here. Um, is uh, You can see here, verse, uh, uh, oh goodness, let me see here. Let me go back to, I need to go to 36. It says, the priests, the sons of uh, Jedidiah, the house of Jeshua, there he is again, Yeshua, uh, 973, and it keeps going, and it keeps going, and it talks about that. You'll notice, interestingly enough here, that uh, in the text, there are a very big lack of people from um, the uh, Levites, interestingly enough. And I'm looking for it here. I didn't write it in my notes. But you'll see that there were only, what was it again? Verse 40. Yes, the Levites, thank you, were only 74 in number. The singers were 128. But the Levites were only 74. Out of 42, what did we say? I think we end up coming to the number 42,360 uh, in verse 64. Only 42 Levites were willing to go. And that, 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 uh, that, that shocks many, many commentators. Out of that number, that was all. There was many more than that. Of the tribe of Levi, they could have went, but it was the people that, that were trained to do the. That they had the lineage that that they were the ones that were apparently. Now it's thought they were stuck in Babylon, and it was thought to be that Babylon was a pretty spiritual place. Uh, there was a lot of high places, a lot of worship going on. There was a lot of those things that uh, that lured, kept luring the the Levites back to the Babylon way. Oh, we can. This is a highly spiritual place. We can, we can worship God here. You know, why do we have to go back? We don't have to go back. Make the, the excuse makers apparently were in the priesthood. Oh, I'm sorry, but that, that should that should send shivers, send shivers down your spine. Um, that That's strange. But that wasn't super uncommon. Like when the tribes split up, the north and the south, I mean, a lot of the Levites went around. Um, there's like some different stories or maybe it's in the judges more but like oh well you're a levite come be come lead worship for us you right know, there they, was a right. lot of that even within sure you know, understand individual worship like we'll take you on as our own priest right or we, yeah. you you will serve the lord in our house yeah. yes but at the call of god at the beckoning of cyrus at the financial you know mother load payload even they could not be lured in, or asked to or challenged or commanded by God to go back and worship him. Folks, listen, this is called a remnant for a reason. And in fact, in Isaiah, it is talk, talked about in Isaiah, I think it's chapter 10 or 11. Uh, they, they are said to be coming back, promised to only be a remnant to return um, as the people of Israel at this time. It would only be a remnant. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be what you and I would think. And... And what I find interesting as, again, another it could be another excuse to rebuilding the temple or rebuilding the people. We just don't have enough. We don't have enough people. There's not enough, there's not enough Levites. There's not enough interest. It's not going to be spiritual enough. Yeah, I mean, could you imagine all the excuses? And apparently the excuses that were among some people that decided to stay behind and not, you know. They probably had a good life. They probably had a good life, yes. So yeah. Think, uh, somewhere. Mm. Eli. Eli. Yeah, yeah, he fell over and he was a big stature and he broke his neck and died. Right, and yeah. Probably pretty heavy. Didn't feel like walking, you know, over uh, miles in the well, sand. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a good observation. They, they had a, probably a, such a good life that it would have been hard to let go. Yeah. Didn't have hard work. Yeah. That's, that's, that's MacArthur's notes. That's what he Go, yeah, go ahead. Since the Levites had been entrusted with the menial task of temple service, many of them may have found a more comfortable way of life. Yeah, yeah, it might have found it, 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 interesting menial, menial menial service. Yeah, go ahead, Emma. Was there anything you wanted to add, Emma? Okay. Okay. 
No, yeah, yeah, the descendants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, interesting. So, yeah, so this is going to be a, a, a remnant. As prophesied by the Lord, by Isaiah, by Jeremiah, this is not going to be a large grouping that is pro prophesied to go. Uh, but that, unfortunately, that didn't stop people. But it is interesting. Um, the, the priesthood um, uh, being the ones that were really kind of dragging some things behind, at least the Levites. Um, interesting. A couple clothing, closing things from 40, uh, sorry, four, or 64 to 70. I want to look at just a few things here and then we'll close up. Um, verse 64, there's the whole assembly together, uh, numbering 42,360, besides their male and female servants, of whom there were 730, or 7,337. They had 200 male and female singers. I like this. They're just, they're, any and all who want to come, even the singers, right? Even the boy bands, you know, and even the whoever's willing to come, you know, singers. But and these are not the the the, the Asaph singers, right? These are not in the priesthood uh, singers. The, these are these are others, right? I guess you know. I don't know the B team. I don't know. I'm not sure. Who went, but they were coming as well. Their horses, seven hundred and thirty-six mules, two hundred and forty-five camels, four hundred and thirty-five donkeys were six thousand seven hundred and twenty. How I wrote this is in your notes. You can see any, everyone and everything counts. Everyone and everything counts. All hands on deck. Anybody willing to go? Who's stirred in the spirit to go? If it's only going to be 42,360, so be it. Who's willing to come? Right? And they're counting everybody, even every animal. And, and, and I think that's interesting. The, the Lord uh, says everybody counts in this effort. And I think that's important. Even for us as we're out here. Um, and everything counts. Everything counts. Um, you know, we don't, especially even when we're talking about building things and stuff like that. You, you know, what what happens in, in inflation time? Sometimes you, you know, I don't know if Wes wants to do this. Shouldn't speak too soon. But, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, you got to use reclaimed things, right? Or you got to use, you know, who knows? what We got stuff out in the barn we might have to use to build this church. You know, I don't, you know, I don't know. You know, but everything counts, right? Just don't, don't think that, um, don't think that it has to be some, you know, nice shiny thing or whatever, or you know, it has to be, you know. Well, and, let, and let's fact, let's look at this because I want to say not 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 only everything counts, every every bit counts. I want you to see this because look at what it says, verse sixty eight. It says some of the heads of the families when they came to the house of the Lord that is in Jerusalem, they made free will offerings for the house of God to erect it on on its site. And according to their ability, they gave to the treasury of the work 30, or 61,000 derricks of gold, 5,000 uh, minas of silver, and 100 priestly garments. So I, isn't that interesting? I, every little bit, you know, not only every person counts, not only everything counts, every bit of giving, people were willing to give to this as they were able. It says here, their ability, according to their ability. So... Not everybody was able to give a bunch. You know, it's interesting. The tithes of the, 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 the temple and all that stuff had gone away. So how do we learn to give? How do we give? You know, they don't, you know, they don't have that all together. That system's not all together. And so they get they get to just give out of, you know, the cheerful giving of their heart. The stirring of the spirit. And that's how we're to give. I, I think I put 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7. What's well, 2 Corinthians 9, 7? God loves a what kind of giver? A cheerful giver, right? Not out of compulsion or duty, but giving as God gives ability, right? And so whether it's more than 10%, less than 10%, doesn't matter. Every bit counts, even to the building fund here at Calvary Bible right. Church. No, but you see, that's how they took it, and that's how they approached it. Every bit counts, and so they gave. Now, verse 70, the priests, the Levites, some of the people, the singers, the gatekeepers, and the temple servants lived in their towns and all the rest of Israel in their towns. And that's just saying they went and when they moved, at the time they moved, see, he's looking back, Ezra is looking back when he's writing this, and he's saying when they got there, when they got to the, the place of Israel, and see that kind of answers a little bit of your question there, um, um, uh, Beth. It's interesting. It says that the temple served, they lived in their towns and all the rest of Israel lived in their towns. I mean, so we have, we have uh, maybe even some people inhabiting other parts of Israel, not necessarily just Judah. Um, but, uh, so yeah, I, again, there's a lost tribe idea that's really out there still in, in, in church and it's er, in Christianity and it's, it's a strange idea, but, um, but anyway, yeah, so they go and they go and they inhabit, right? 
and there's specific places for the priests, right? And they're, they, they all, they all kind of gather in their groups and they go and they inhabit the land while things are being built, right? Not everybody's in Jerusalem at the time, right? 42,000 people at that time, it doesn't work. That's a desolate place. You might remember, Jeremiah talked about it, I think, uh, specifically, was that there were some people that were left behind, the, 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 for, the totally forgotten, some of the, the poorest of the poor uh, Nebuchadnezzar didn't even want. And so he left some people surviving and living in the Holy Land, um, but they were, they were the only people that were left. Um, and so there was some infrastructure, but not much at all left. And so they went and they inhabited and made these towns. And we're going to talk about it a little bit more as we go, especially in Nehemiah. This trouble that happened with the invading groups around the area, because this was a, this was a tough time. Daniel called it in Daniel 9, the wall will be built, the city and the wall will be built in troublesome times, is what he said. Troubling, troublesome times. And that's why it's so interesting to build in troublesome and interesting times like we're in right now. Because we're really striving in the same way that the people of Israel did when they had to rebuild Israel or rebuild Jerusalem, especially the temple. So, so that we can find a lot of uh, identity with them as they built in trouble, troubling times, and so are we. But well, that's those two chapters. Just as briefly as we can get through two chapters. Thank you for your patience. We're a little bit over time, but that's all right. We're doing two chapters each time as we can to get to the end of Ezra. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to do some uh, uh, prayer requests here locally, and we'll let you guys go online. But pray with me as we close. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, and we thank you for your word. We thank you for the reminder of your spirits working and moving and stirring. Uh, Lord, we pray that, uh, uh, God, that you would uh, continue to stir in our hearts. Uh, Lord, that we would be yielded more and more to your spirit and less and less to this world. Uh, Lord, there are many concerns and cares on our heart, but Lord, even in the middle of all of that, we ask that you would just uh, move in us by your spirit in these concerns and cares that lord above all else we would desire your spirit and the working of your spirit the ministry that jesus has given us the ministry of reconciliation reconciling the world to you uh, lord these things are much more important lord it's interesting that you began by building the temple before you you built the city and how important that is lord and that you want to you want to get us together in, in, in us, Lord, before you want to work on the outer things. <laughs> um, so, Lord, even us tonight, we have a lot of dreams and visions and goals and aspirations, even in life, even in troublesome times. But, Lord, you want to, you want to build us firm on the inside first. The, the, the temple of the Holy Spirit is in us. And, Lord, you want to rebuild that initially first. And so, Lord, as, as we, we even look to build as a church or as, even as we uh, lay our lives and our, our goals before you, uh, Lord, would you strengthen us and move us in inwardly, um, build us up to the people that we need to be.